Hello, everyone. Welcome again to another episode of Around the Block. This is Sasaki, and I'm here as always to bring you the latest news in the crypto market. How is going, you guys? Well, to start this off, uh, actually, we have some uh, quite a interesting week, but um, we have serious things to talk about today. In order to start our episode, I'll bring you guys something that has happened in Brazil that has been going on in a lot of countries, but especially in Brazil this time. Uh, we had this in Canada, in the US, but anyways, um, this week it was happening in Brazil. Guys, so to start this off, I have to say that we had this news that Binance has been investigated by authorities in Brazil because they were, um, let's say, in formal words, they were influencing their clients in order to use a service that in Brazil is not supposed to work. Well, I'm talking about the futures market in the crypto assets. Um, I think you guys all know that since last year, uh, the futures market is not regulated in Brazil. So therefore, the exchanges uh, are not supposed to in any way influence or suggest their clients to use this kind of assets. What happens is that um, the federal police of Brazil has found that, yeah, it, and they have proof of that. We've shared screen shares and all kind of stuff in their website from the last year that the actual uh, buying the actual company was uh, teaching how people from Brazil could um, you know, they could actually use the website, change the language in the website so that, let's say, you wouldn't know that you're from Brazil just because change the language, right? That's a, you know. And because of that, a lot of people from Brazil in the last year and until now, to be honest, have been able to trade in the futures market. And that is something very serious because you all know that there has been a lot of countries, including Brazil. Uh, by the way, Binance has had some issues in Canada as well and some countries in Europe. But this time things got very serious because um, they're probably going to be prosecuted in Brazil again. Um, of course, we're not sure of how, how much this is going to get Binance in trouble. Uh, you know, Binance is huge. But it's something that has brought my attention. And the problem with that is that not only Binance, but a lot of the exchanges that offer their service in Portuguese, Brazilian Portuguese, are able to do that. So I can see very clear, we can see very clearly that right now, because of that situation, a lot of other exchanges are probably going to be uh, watched more closely from the government. And that is something that, you know, bothers the traders, especially people who are day traders. So uh, it's just something that I wanted to bring to you guys that it was something that happened before in other countries. It's happening and it, I am kind of curious of how this is going to work on the next weeks because more and more the market's growing this year, especially with the Bitcoin, a lot of hikes. And by the way, just before, just after I say this, I'm going to share with you guys some interesting points in the BNB charts. But the thing is, um, now people in Brazil probably are going to be a little bit more uh, cautious about all of that. Okay. And as a reminder, this brings me to another point. Recently, it has been pretty much four months since the Brazilian government actually approved the crypto payments to be used for fee payment in Brazil. So people are actually able to pay taxes using crypto. That is already happening in Rio de Janeiro here in Brazil. So if you're a citizen, you want to pay your fee, your taxes in the city, Rio de Janeiro, you can actually pay using your crypto money. All right. So that is something pretty nice that I think we brought here at around the block on probably two months ago, but it, 
was like brought my attention that we had this thing going on and now we have this with Binance. What can we see from all of this news that has been, you know, um, going on on the internet? Basically saying that in general, Brazilian government is paying a lot of attention in crypto. And when that happens, usually, usually some things happen just after that. More regulation, more things to be done. Maybe now to report some, do some crypto reports, you have to be an analyst, certificate by the government. I don't know. It's just ideas. It's just things that people have been saying for a lot of times, uh, including last year, but never happened. For those who don't know, who don't know in Brazil, the crypto market is still a little bit, let's say, blurry. We don't have a lot of definitions in here. But with these things going on, we are getting pretty close to a more organized and, by the way, regulated country when it comes to crypto. All right. So with that being said, I'm going to share with you guys um, my, my vector screen so we can see whether this um, situation has had an impact in the BNB or not. So guys, we actually were talking about this uh, last week, especially not only Binance, but other, especially other coins as well, that this market, especially when it comes to BNB, USDT, uh, this, is, it, this is like perfectly the kind of market that we call with no trend at all. And why is that? Because uh, th that is when people who actually trade the so-called resistance and support make a lot of money. Because now we have for one, two, three, pretty much four times the BNB getting close to areas that we call either resistance or support and then it doesn't break through uh, above or below. And then it goes, it keeps, let's say, trapped in this box right here. So what does that mean? Basically, if you're looking for a trend and the Binance coin, BNB, you're not going to find it right now. Um, candles are very tiny to be optimistic. I would say this could be a good trend in a few weeks but not right now and you know you guys know that i always bring here the financial volume to in order to analyze whether something has been going on if you don't know how to put this in your chart you can just right click in anywhere on your vector screen you click on add indicator right here and then i would go with financial volume with color right something that is very nice in vector is that when you click in order to show some indicator in order to add that to your chart um right away vector is going to show you some of the definition of that indicator so for example financial volume with color show the financial volume using different colors according to the prices change so i will add new window click on ok and now there is you can see that we did have some uh, interesting movements here yeah, actually with some financial volume in March so last month but right now um, I can't see just a lot of movement in this uh, BNB chart and that that means we don't have so much to, to do when it comes to trading I would say for long term we do have some good things happening and for that reason I would say well, the the short term can be not so exciting, but keep your eyes on the long term as any asset, any asset, not only crypto. And with that being said, let's go now to the Bitcoin chart. Let's start off in the daily chart already. Um, we had so many great weeks in March and actually the beginning of April was so good as well. But now we can see very clearly what can be a pullback on the prices of Bitcoin. Well, there were a lot of people, especially economists and people who analyze the market that didn't believe 
that Bitcoin could be going above $30,000. Well, it happened for a couple of hours and then Bitcoin went down. So I just put here in my vector, um, the resistance line exactly on 30K. So you guys can see that Bitcoin has had some hikes above, but not for long. And what, why is that a matter of importance right now? Because the volume, the financial volume in those days was very low. It was very low. So I talk about this every week. When you have the financial volume that is not so high, is low, and the trend is going up, maybe the trend is not so consistent. Maybe, because as I always say, no one in the market can predict the future, but you can see the possibility. Usually, a strong trend, even it doesn't matter if a high trend or downtrend, doesn't matter. It is, um, it goes with financial volume growing as well. And, and that didn't happen in Bitcoin this month, the last week in April. Because of that, not only that, also some, you know, lack of news, lack of expectations brought the market down for the last seven days. So from our last episode, which was a week ago to now, we had nine, let's say 9.8%, something like that. So in, in six days, that can be a pullback for Bitcoin. And that is, we can see very clearly that had a high that was so strong during 30 days, pretty much, you can see here. By the way, something that I think it's very useful in Vector and that is very easy to use is that if I just click with the left button of my mouse and then press until the highest uh, area, I can see two important things. First, how much the high has been achieved, for example, this case, uh, 54%, and how long the period that I am, I'm looking at lasted. So in this case, 32 days. And we can all agree that 52, 53%, 50% is a, a great high, you know, in any asset, not only for crypto. So when you have 50% high, uh, and to be honest, you can actually take the last two or three episodes here, we were talking about it. You sooner or later, you're going to have a pullback because it's normal. It's it's natural, right? The movements, they are not going to do, go up forever. They can do that, but probably it's not going to happen. So having a 50% high in one month and 10% pullback is just as normal as any asset would do. Now, what am I looking at right now as a trader, as a crypto enthusiast? I'm looking at this level, guys. 26K is a very important level because it was showing us earlier in the month some very interesting areas of support on the chart. So hopefully and probably as analysis are telling us, this pullback means two things, can be two things. First, if it stops under the 26K, it could be go lower and lower, and that would be a little bit more terrifying for people who are bought in crypto. But if it does stop above the 26K um, American dollars, it could be just a very simple and very light pullback. So I would be watching very close. I always say that because it's, I think it's all people should do that. Watching very closely for the next days, how this asset, how Bitcoin is going to react when it, when it comes close to the 26K um, resistance and support levels. All right. Resistance, 30,000 support. 26, of course, it is resistance support until it breaks through in some way, either above or below. But we have this time going. We have pretty quite weak. Like I said, maybe it, it is. it could be a lack of great news. So I would be waiting. 
On the other hand, so let's go to the other side. We have Ethereum right here with much, much more stronger movements, much more stronger. Why? Um, if you watched our last episode, our last two episodes, you would know that Ethereum just had a very important update with some people were called. I, I just knew that it would be Shanghai update. And then I was, I was looking to it on the internet. And then apparently there, there were, apparently, no, actually there was being another update and the name became Chapella. That was, you know, just like a, a name that created on the internet. And I found it so funny. Anyways, because of that update on last week, uh, we actually have so many great highs on Ethereum recently. And something that I was telling you guys that is very important is that Ethereum broke the $20,000, uh, actually the $2,000 barrier, the resistance level, and went up. I was very excited about that. I think we all were very excited. But something very unique and very unexpected happened. Um, Ethereum just came back all the way. And right now it is um, today at $1,800. To be very honest, guys, I was not expecting that much of a strong movement because it is right now, and you can see very clearly here, look, this area, and this is the support area intermediate support area it is just on the level that it was before the chapella update um either the update wasn't as exciting as we thought it would be or maybe something happened along the way and therefore the developers are were already already know already knew about it so well, like you can see very clearly on the chart, we just came back to the level that we were before the update. So very ups and downs week, nothing to say more than that. And that was definitely not my expectation, especially because we just had this amazing day on close to 12 April, when you have the maximum of financial volume in the month. And right now it is going down. Now it's really, it's a dangerous area because um, Ethereum has been four days uh, just very, very close to the support level. It is above 2000 American dollars. All right. And that is the kind of situation where I bet that no one would expect right now, especially because of the update. So again uh these movements are not what we expected maybe the community were already you know knowing something that uh, could happen or not it's interesting because this brings me to the fourth and last crypto asset that i'm going to show you guys in this episode which is dogecoin um again we just recently brought here uh, the topic that Elon Musk, as always, he just did something that made Dogecoin explode in a few hours. Basically, what he did was he took the icon from Dogecoin and he put it in the Twitter website as he's the owner of Twitter right now. And because of that, in a few hours, uh, the, Doge, the Dogecoin exploded like, let's say how exactly how much it was it got 30 percent in one day even less than that and i was telling you guys you can actually look for the episode i i i, I can remember very clearly that i was saying guys be careful when the prices explode just because of a specific event it can be dangerous to buy you know i was talking about it and just like what happened on ethereum dogecoin actually had this uh trend down and it's just in the level that was before elon musk put the icon on the website so 
This is what we call speculation on the crypto market. He could, he, we don't know, he, he could buy anywhere in these points. He could buy anywhere here. You know, he could be buying for days or someone he knows. And then he says, okay, now, now I'm going to put this in the website and it's going to explode. I'm not telling you guys he did it. I'm just just what could happen. And in a few hours, the crypto explode. Someone could sell here because the person knows that what's going on because it's just a speculation. And just two weeks after that, the Dogecoin is in the same level as before. So that is something that really I, I could see happening very clearly uh, on the day that it was posted. I, I really, I could see. And in this case, a specific case, well, now we have four assets uh, with that we saw today. This would be the one with the lower price, right? So Dogecoin is worth cents of dollars. And because of that, um, when you have an asset just like this one, which is worth um, cents of dollars, the volatility is so strong because anything can happen. Anything can bring to highs of 30% again, or even more, let's say, I don't know, 100%. It could, could happen, happened before. And this in the same way, it could be in the way down. So it could go less, let's say minus 40%, 50%. So it's, it's the, the kind of situation where you can see so clear and so precisely how much of a specific topic, a specific event can bring the asset uh, 30, 40% up. And just before everything is back to where it was before. So guys, again, we all know that reading the news and getting updated on what's going on is very important. That's why we have this podcast for you guys. On the other hand, if you just take your decisions based on news, you are going to be so biased. You know what I mean? You're going to do something because you saw just on the news. So always see the news, understand what's going on, but also do your own analysis. I see a lot of people just doing things because they saw some influencer, they saw someone saying, you know, you know what I'm talking about. And this is a situation that, unfortunately, I know that a lot of people bought here. Like, we can see that, all right? A lot of people bought here. And imagine the guy who bought here or even here. Someone bought here, you know, because of that new. He, I don't know if, you know, how much, but he could say, oh, now it's going up forever. I'm going to buy it. And then right now, this trader is getting le uh, minus 22% or even even more if he was uh, us using leverage. So that is something that I want to bring you guys, this analysis of these four assets in the crypto market. All right. So that's um, now in order to, you know, I always have this kind of... Um, Thing that I want to end the episode with something more light, something not so you know heavy as we started that. So now two topics that let's say are more a little bit lighter in terms of uh, seriousness. Um, so thirty percent uh, there there has been a research on that thirty percent or even more than that, a little bit more on TikTok videos um, regarding crypto investments are misleading. So I think we all know that these uh, generations that are just getting used to TikTok, Instagram, all social media, they, act they actually get their news from social media. You know, they don't need, need, they don't actually read the newspaper anymore, you know. Because of that, we have uh, so many people believing in anything that can they see. TikTok, Instagram, you know, uh, it doesn't matter which social media we're talking about. In this case, I'm talking about TikTok, but um, and and actually there there are some social media 
that if you put something like uh, hashtag uh, crypto, your your video is is less engaged to the platform. Less people are gonna see it when you post. Just you know, just so you can see the the size of the situation. So this is not surprising for me, to be honest. I I always knew that a lot of things that on the internet that are fake news or, or you know, but when it comes to investment, it's different, right? You have to pay attention, you have to study. So this is a topic that just reinforces us to say to you guys, do your own research. This is a mantra that uh, pretty much all crypto users, especially the ones that are more old school like me, uh, just the beginning of the Bitcoin was just that, do your own research. It is very important that you actually um, understand what's going on in the crypto market and not only because, again, I was talking just before about that, just because you saw something somewhere, all right? And that brings me to the last topic that I want to talk about, which is, well, guys, you know that the um, artificial intelligence is going, is growing so fast, uh, is going deep in a lot of topics. And I don't know if you guys heard of that, but there has been this German magazine that supposedly they were able to recreate uh, Michael Schumacher's um, let's say consciousness in, in some extent. Um, and so he, they would be interviewing him using AI. Yeah, that, that's, that's just what I say. They are going to be able supposedly to interview Michael Schumacher using uh, artificial intelligence in that situation. Well, that is crazy. I know. Uh, I've heard all of those who watched the Netflix series, which is so famous, is Black Mirror. I would say, man, this is so Black Mirror and that's it. But the thing is, um, not only that, but also what happened is that, of course, the family got crazy because I don't know if you guys have been following this situation since his accident a few years ago, but the family never really showed his situation clearly. So... No one knows whether he's awake, whether he is able to talk or, you know, no one knows. And the, th the first thing that happened is that they are going to prosecute them. They take legal action on the German magazine. And because it's, you know, it's crazy that a guy who had an accident, he was, um, we don't even know his situation when it comes to health. And people are trying to recreate his consciousness just to get more audience i would say this is when the ai gets um they're they're becoming a a headache you know when it comes to legal actions and especially in this case when it comes to people when it comes to you know mindful it's it's crazy but it was just a hint of what, what's been going on and what we can expect for next week's all right, guys, this episode was a little bit shorter than usual because, like you can see, the chart is a little bit more quiet, except for Ethereum, who has such a crazy week. And I hope to next week we have lots of hikes or at least good things, good updates on the crypto market to bring for you guys. As I always say, you can get a free trial of Vector. Just click in the description below and get your free trial of Vector, use the same educators as I use. If you have any doubts, any difficulties, just let the comment, send an email to us. We are going to be very help, very happy to help you at any time. All right. This is, was our episode. Hope to see you guys on the next week and have a great week again. See you guys. Bye.